Welcome to Tapped In with Tony. I am your host, Tony Bogan. And tonight, joining me, I have a special guest. He is a content creator and a producer of the Cleveland Heights Blueprint and her season, John Hay, Bofa Evans. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Tony. Appreciate you for having me. Not a problem. I've seen your work over the past couple of years, and you make really a lot of great stuff for the student athletes in Cleveland. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Definitely something I strive to do. Um, give them some high class, high end um, content. So awesome. And um, for those who are tuning in for the first time, tell us a little bit about your background. OK, um, again, my name is Craig. They call me both or they call me sleep. Um, I'm originally from Compton, California, um, moved to Cleveland in the early mid 90s um, after the riots. Came here, uh, grew up on the south side, 116th area, Kansman, then relocated to the Lakeshore area. So I'm really well-rounded around the city. Um, my work, I started off as working in beer, wine, and liquor. I had a wine store inside of Beachwood Mall for a few years, Strongsville Mall. We were located out of Columbus. Then I worked for a law firm. And... Um, one of my best friends, his name is Jermaine Smith. He's on the coaching staff at Cleveland Heights currently with uh, Max Stevens. But they coached together at Euclid High School when they were both coordinators. And so um, I had never missed the game there. I always went just supported them as a fan and as a friend. And once they got the Cleveland Heights job, I, um, you know, I work on film. I do scripts and I work on um, movies and TV shows as well. So I wanted to learn about the camera for a script that I was writing. So I bought a camera and I asked Coach Smith and Matt, can I take some videos and pictures of the team just to get acquainted with my uh, equipment that I had purchased and fell in love. And that's where both of us sports media started and haven't looked back since. Awesome. And uh, I know you said you uh, owned a couple of wine companies in Northeast Ohio. Uh, yes. How did you meet uh, both uh, Coach Stevens and uh, your friend Jermaine Smith and what, uh, how did you end up getting involved through there? How was it like, like your first time shooting video and photo for the kids? Oh, uh, well, I saw, I've, I've known um, Coach Jermaine Smith since we were in college together. He, Him and my brother uh, played college football at Tiffin University. They were on the same team. Um, they were housemates. So um, that's how I got acquainted with Jermaine. And um, we found out we were both from Cleveland. And then when he we came back home from college, he stayed around the corner from me. So we just we just hung out every day and we got really tight, really cool. And that's actually how I met uh, Coach Max Stevens was through Jermaine, just that friendship. Awesome, awesome. And um, continuing on with that, what led to the start of the blueprint, the Cleveland Heights blueprint? So um, when I was, I started off, I just started taking pictures at first. This is when um, Justin Wiley, who's currently at Cincinnati, um, Mike Preston, who was at Ohio State, they were on the Cleveland Heights team. So I was just taking pictures of them, just, uh, again, learning my camera. But that was just that I always came as a friend. Um, I was always supporting anyway, so that kind of gave me field level access so I could get on the field with the players. Um, but the Blueprint, they were already filming the Blueprint. They had already had a couple episodes done before I picked up my camera, but they were shooting with um, cell phones. And so that first year while I was shooting pictures, they were doing um, doing the episodes with the phone. I didn't know what they were doing at the time. I just saw people following them around with the cell phone. And so to rewind it, I actually didn't get into video until I got with Sean Spencer at Cleveland Rose, the basketball coach at uh, Rose. That's one of my childhood friends as well from Collinwood High School. And so, you know, after football season was over, I asked him, could I come and take pictures of his basketball team? And um, that's it was the Benedictine game, and it was crazy. It was 2019, 2020 season, and it was packed. So I just decided, like, let me turn this on the video because I couldn't get any pictures because it was just too packed. And I saw my page take off. And so I started to film with them doing the um, – the basketball season doing video and then coach Kahari Hicks, who's the offensive coordinator for Cleveland Heights reached out to me and asked me would I take over um, shooting the blueprint. And so I jumped on that, took on that task, not knowing how difficult it would be. Um, but I definitely jumped on that. And that's how I actually got started with that. 
That's awesome. And I noticed that you mentioned the Rhodes game. I remember uh, the guy named Jamal Sumlin, and I believe mm -hmm. I'm forgetting a couple other kids played on that Rhodes team that made the district championship game. Those games from uh, a guy, Third Coast Hoops, Steve Newton, took some video of that. Oh, yeah, that sure. game, like, it looked like it was staying room only. You couldn't get in that place. Yeah, that's that's how yeah. Rhodes back then. Every, every, every game with Rhodes in that 2019-2020 season was like that, standing room only. Um, they had Keyshawn Hall. They had uh, Amari Dickerson. They had um, D'Lo. They had Marlon and Jamal Sumlin. That's that's one of the best Senate area teams I've ever seen, like a group of talent. And I've been in the area since about 1999 in the sports industry, in the sports world in local Cleveland, starting off with Chet Mason when he was at uh, John Hay. So just to see that team, that was a, a really good collective of talent. Um I wish we could have seen what they would have did without the COVID, you know, oh, COVID, yeah. they did lose the season to that, which was heartbreaking. But I think that was one of the, the special teams in the area, especially out of the center that we've ever seen. Of course. And uh, obviously you've got Glenville success, East Texas success in the past for uh, oh, sure. basketball. We've gone to State Pump for a couple times. And um, speaking of the pandemic, how did that affect you guys as, uh, you know, doing the video and with the, the blueprint did that start in 2020 or did you do the blueprint the year after so i started the year before so what's funny is about that like when hicks asked me to take over the blueprint i just thought i would come in and film and just put stuff together but then i i did my research studying um shows that were kind of mo the model that hicks wanted to go in so hard knocks um a couple of shows on amazon prime and i saw the work that I would have to put in. And I started to film, but it was just so scattered. I didn't have a storyline. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was just filming. So that first year I filmed the whole year and I didn't do any episodes because it was just, it was too overwhelming at the end. And so um, we actually started, the first episodes came out during the COVID year. So Cleveland Heights still had, they got the chance to play their season, but all Senate schools got their season shut down. And so that's also when I was supposed to start her season with uh, John Hay. And I was supposed to do uh, City Dreams with the Rhodes program. But those two got canceled out due to COVID. So that really affected uh, what I had planned. Um, I had to stay at my job a little longer. I was working at a law firm at the time as a uh, lead investigator. So during COVID, I had to It just I had planned on quitting and focusing on the filming. But when COVID happened, I had to stay at the job and it was just but I I'm thankful for COVID because it helped me master what I wanted to do or get better, better at the job of filming and, and creating content. Um, so I was thankful for it in that aspect, but it definitely hurt some of the projects that we had planned out. Gotcha. And I understand you said you, you've been, you've done a lot where even with the video, you owned a couple wine stores and you said you were a lead investigator. Were you uh, an investigator for the city? Oh no. So it was a, it was a, a, a large defense firm. Um, I have a contract, so I can't really talk about it because they, they are involved in large class action lawsuits. And so um, I'll just say like some of our clients were big tobacco, um, medical, medical institutions, the NFL for, you know, the concussion protocol. So my job and my team, I had a team of 12 people. We were to investigate people that were pretty much um, joining the lawsuits to make sure that they had a uh, legitimate claims and stuff like that so yeah that's what i did i enjoyed that work i you know it was a nosy job i love being nosy so i enjoyed it but i enjoyed the filming more understood we're gonna uh, switch gears back to the filming so we're okay. gonna talk about uh 2021 i think i believe i was at a scrimmage like before i was going to the beach that day i had a camera i'd seen you filming a little bit of the cleveland heights akron east for um uh, what eventually would become one of the episodes of the blueprint. So um, talk to me about season, this would be season one or season two? Uh, that was season or just the one that we've, that I started. The 21, 2021. Oh, that was the first season. So that was, a, that was supposed to be the second season. But again, like I said, the year before, I just didn't know what I was doing. So that was the first season, um, the 2021 season. And um we actually, I did four episodes of that, and um, 
we we actually have four episodes finished now. The final four episodes, they they are complete and finished. It's just some. How can I say it? I, I have to iron out uh, some legalities about some players that were involved in parents and things like that that um, didn't give me the okay. So that's why the last four episodes really haven't been released, but they're done. They've been completed. Uh, um, that's why I've kind of slowed down on releasing episodes just to make sure that I'm doing the right things as far as being able to release that to the public. So completely understand. And uh, honestly, as a fan of your work, I'd say uh, the first, all the episodes are pretty good. And uh, I kind of felt like a hard knocks of high school football. <laughs> That's what I was trying to uh, convey. Um, and I think I, I want to say the first time I met you was actually with, um, you were covering Mike Hall because I was doing his documentary on his senior season. And I remember you and then I just saw you popping up everywhere. I'm like, this guy is everywhere, like literally. <laughs> so, yeah, I just want to commend you on the work that you do. I really, you know, I think people should, you, you're, the way you do your journalism and the way you cover sports is refreshing. Um, it's straightforward. Uh, you talking, you, the way you talk to the players, you talk to the coaches. So I do want to commend you on the work that you do in covering Northeast Ohio. And just Ohio in general, as far as every sport, baseball, basketball, football. So I do want to give you your uh, your props and pat you on the back for that. Thanks, man. I, I really appreciate it. And uh, it was great getting the chance to cover that Streetsboro program. Mike Hall coming through there. That Streetsboro class was absolutely loaded. They went undefeated the year before and knocked off St. Vincent, St. Mary. Yeah, I remember Mike Hall, I believe Mike Hall is going to be a very high draft pick in the 2024 draft class because he, he's legit. He's no doubt. Legit. I've never seen, out of all the high school athletes I've covered, I've never seen anybody work as hard as him. And, like, covering him from 6 in the morning to 8 at night, like, his his um devotion to his craft as well as his family and how he – um. He went about his schoolwork like it was it was unreal. He was like a man for real. Like he was he handled his business like a man, but he was still a kid. So it was just good seeing that from a high level athlete. And I was able to take what I learned from him and to the players that I'm coaching now that I'm coaching at John Hay and say, hey, I know what a high level athlete looks like. I know the work that they put in from sundown to sun up. So I was I was blessed to be a part of that and for them to, um, you know, reach out to me and help let me help with that project. And uh, speaking of that, talk to me a little bit about her season, the uh, John Hay girls basketball. Uh, I believe you're an assistant coach there as well. Yes, yes. So um, that came about crazy. Um, that was that was actually, I'll say the universe put that together. Um, that was the year Rhodes. They had to forfeit some games, so they weren't able to participate in the Senate championship that game. So that year was Glenville versus is um, East Tech, coached by Brent, Brett Moore, one of the best coaches in the area. I had to give that plug. Um, Brett Moore was coaching East Tech. Michael Hall was coaching Glenville. And, um, so I just went to support Mariah Holt, who was the girls coach at Glenville, Michael Holt's um, daughter. So I've grew up with her. That's one of my closest friends. She dates my cousin. Um, they have a beautiful family together. So I was just going to support her to um, get her Coach of the Year award. And I went to John Hay. I, I went to John Hay for two years before they shut down in 2002 and graduated from Collinwood. So when I walked in the gym, I saw that John Hay was getting ready to play East Tech for the girls championship. And so I was like, oh, let me go get my camera. My camera was in the car. So I'm like, let me get my camera to film this. This is John Hay. You know, first game I had seen in them since I had been back in Cleveland. So um, I filmed that game. Very intense, very good game. John Hay ended up winning. I made the video at the end of the night, posted it, and Coach uh, Vanetta Kreider, the head coach of John Hay, she reached out to me via Instagram, thanked me for that, and we just started talking. Um, her nickname is Sleep as well, like mine. She graduated from Collinwood, like I graduated from Collinwood. So we just had a lot of, a lot of um, similarities, and as we got to talk, her passion for the game was just, and her passion for her student athletes was unmatched, and so. I just, I, you know, she asked me, hey, let's work together. And we, we planned on her season and then COVID happened. So they missed that year. And they had, they had a loaded team. Like that John Hay team that they had was loaded. I really think they would have went, had a deep playoff run that year. Um, 
But so that kind of got put on the back burners. Um, Ryder reached out to me again after COVID. We stayed in touch a little bit, but she reached into me after the season. And we just started from there. Um, she saw my passion for the student athletes, for the game of basketball, and asked me that I want to help. And that's actually what I went to college for, was education, but I wanted to be a high school basketball coach. So it just worked itself out. And you know, I filmed that first season back from COVID. And that's that was, the rest is history. So Awesome. And I've, I've heard good things about the John Hay girls basketball team, I believe. The year before, in 2019-2020, I believe they had a player go to Miami, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so they had um, Amar. She was first team all Ohio. Um, OSHA. Um, Division One. she was unreal. So, yeah, she did go down there. But she – John Hay is an academic institution first. So I just want to – you know, I know we're a Senate school, but that is an academic first school. Um, they're ranked in the top ten in the state of Ohio – you know, ranked in the top 10 percent in the United States of America, of all high school. So it's always uh, education first there. And she wanted to go to be a doctor. So she kind of put her, her basketball career on hold. And now she's in the process of becoming a doctor. But yeah, she did go to uh, down there to uh, Florida for basketball and decided she wanted to take the education right route. They also have Reasia, who was six, seven, I believe, six, six. And she went. D1 to Arkansas Pine Bluff, Pine Bluff, excuse me. And she's actually in a transfer portal now. I'm going to wait and see where she's going. But, yeah, they put a lot of players in college from that team, a lot of players. And uh, I understand you're definitely there with the, a lot of the Senate schools. I know you mentioned John Hay, East Tech, Glenville, Rhodes. And uh, Speaking of Rhodes, are you still working on the uh, City Dreams project with Rhodes, or is that on hold? Uh, with the with- – so right now I'm working on my team. Uh, shout out Roger, who was a former uh, Rose player. So right now I'm just training because now that I'm coaching, my free time is kind of limited. And so with Rose, I'm actually training people to go over there and cover that. We are covering it. Um, I did get some footage last year, um, but it was just a little too hectic with me trying to step into a coaching situation and getting my feet wet with that. But I'm 100%. I talked to Spence maybe a week ago. Um, definitely got some plan things planned with that. I'm a Senate guy. I graduated from the Senate. All of my siblings were uh, played in the Senate, athletes from the Senate, went to college out of the Senate. Um, so, and I understand now just being involved in the inner workings with principals, the athletic directors and things. It's a lot of good things coming through the Senate. Um, they just have to be be explained and, and just be put in people's faces. Uh, we just CMSD, period. So I'm a big advocate for CMSD. Absolutely, especially there. There are there is a lot of talent in CMSD, especially when you look at even with football. Multiple multiple Senate schools made the playoffs last season. John Hay did, Rhodes did, John Marshall, mm-hmm. and you've got the Senate title game between John Kennedy and uh, John Adams. There. Mm-hmm. They play their championship games at Rocky Morge Fieldhouse. I was there to cover both of those games, right? And right, the baseball right. championship at Progressive Field with Rhodes and John Marshall. And they have these combines. I just filmed the um, basketball, the girls and boys basketball combine, uh, which is for Senate athletes, but it's open to the public. You know, college coaches come. You know, if you don't have any offers, you can, you know, show your skill sets in front of these college coaches. They did one for baseball. I covered the one for track and field, the one for football that's held with the Cleveland Browns. So it's a lot of things as far as sports is concerned that they, they, give their student athletes um, the say yes program academically, you know, get your, you know, if you maintain these standards for the say yes program, your college education is paid for whether you're a student athlete or not. So we had numerous people come out of John Hay that were awarded the say yes program where their, their tuition, their books, they're paid for, you know, they just go to school and maintain those grades. So, you know, parents that are struggling are concerned about hey, how am I going to get my kids to the next level? They want to go to college. You have this free program where hey, you have to stay on them to be a student athlete or to be a student in a school building while they're in high school. But you get rewarded by that scholarship to these you know, numerous hundreds of schools that they can apply to. I think those things have to be explained to these parents um, because bottom line, I'll say about 75% of the top athletes in this area, suburban schools, city schools, they come from Cleveland, period, point blank, period. Um, girls basketball, football, 
I'm willing to stamp that. They leave an address. So if these kids understand the opportunities that are in CMSD, I think we'll start to see that shift because, you know, we do have a bad rep and deservedly so in some instances. So, but they have done a lot to clean up and offer these student athletes um, opportunities outside of Cleveland, outside of high school. I think people need to take advantage of those. Absolutely. And I can see, uh, I can see in the future that shift coming with baseball. Rhodes has been a contender. John, uh, John Marshall, uh, Sure. Lincoln West one year made it to the districts in baseball the year after I graduated high school. So I could see it'll probably take a little bit of time for some of those like spring sports and stuff like that. Well, except track and field, so it's really great at that. But I know sometimes it'll take some of that because sometimes I'll see there'll be a bit of a imbalance as far as com- competition, you know, sure. sometimes especially in the tournaments where you'll see a very lopsided final score. Because sure. hopefully they hopefully they can get those opportunities there. I I'd like to see a team like a Glenville or you know John Hay make a, a run through the tournament for baseball or softball. Sure, and, and there you have them. And I do want to commend those West Side schools because they're working hard. Like you said, the John Marshalls, the Rose, the Lincoln West. Um, they are producing at the baseball combine. I saw some phenomenal athletes from those schools, and you know. It's just it's just about getting the exposure, getting it out there, and hopefully when I do expand my team, I, I want to cover, you know, I want to provide more content for those Senate athletes and those different sports, those different niche wrestling. You know, we have swimming. They don't know that we have golf teams in the Senate. You know, so it's just like we have those things. They just have to be put on the forefront. Absolutely. And uh, in addition to yourself and myself, there are also other content creators who cover some of these athletes, especially this past year. Oh, like for Penn sure. Giles, Rhodes, who, he's at Maple now, but yeah, phenomenal. The Rhodes team. Glenville's made a couple of district championship runs. They beat CVCA twice. Yeah, I, I was at that game. That game. Yeah. When they um, when they beat them district title game a couple of years ago. Like I was very proud of that moment. That was a city school, you know, Daryl Peterson one of the best player in the state, you know, so um yeah, for sure. And I, I think it's coming. Um, Kenyon Giles, great basketball player, but a better student. You know what I'm saying? Like a better student coming out of the Senate. And look, like you said, he's at Maple, but that's a Senate product. So, you know, and that's one of my goals, too, is just to change that narrative about how we're viewed and to tell those stories and to do it the right way. Absolutely. Absolutely. I Yeah, I commend you for 100%. And um, moving on, did you uh, did you do any uh, documentary stuff for Cleveland Heights this past year? And do you have any plans to do it this season? Oh, yeah. So filmed all last year, um, did every game, most of the practice, um, the, the August uh, training camps and things like that. So, so I reached out to a producer on the Netflix series um, Hometown Champs and well, it was an editor. I don't want to say a producer. It was an editor. I can't think of his name right now. I'm really sorry about that. But he described the process to me. You film, you break down, and then you start post-production. And you re- for a good show, you really shouldn't see the final results to a year after you're done filming. And so I'm not trying to wait a year, but I, I do want to have more cohesive projects and episodes. So I build those storylines. I'm writing what I want to film now, who I want to film on a specific date, who I want to interview, so that it is more professional looking. It's more appealing to the uh, viewer's eye. And I want to get my sound together. So I, I invested a lot of money into sound equipment and how to do that. So um, I did film all last year, and um, we should be looking for that probably about the start the start of uh, this upcoming season. No, I'll say the end of this upcoming season, you'll probably start seeing the first couple of episodes roll out from this past season with Darion Fair, um, his senior season. Awesome, awesome. I can't wait to see him. And um, if you had any advice you wanted to give uh, any content creators out there who are doing video, photo, and stuff like that, what advice would you give? Um, Do it for the right reason. It is it is very a clout based industry now. So if you if you wanna to sustain some type of success or 
um, longevity in there. They just do it for the right reasons. Build authentic relationships. Be all, be true to yourself and your vision. Um, it's okay to pivot and to uh, try other things, but still be true to your core beliefs. And um, just make sure you're in it for the right reasons. And at the high school levels, I, I really think that's what the most important thing is to be genuine because these are kids. Some of these, this will be the highlight of their life, you know, as far as sports is concerned. So really be, really be mindful about how you present them to the world, and, and you know, just be careful with your work, and be, and again, be genuine, be genuine with it. I agree one hundred percent, and uh, those sport, those clips can have an impact. I made a couple of, I made a post the other day with some highlights I had from twenty twenty, mm-hmm. and yeah. seeing seeing some of the stuff. I've had people message me say, "Hey, do you have any more clips of this game from twenty 2020? I'm like. Let me see if I can find them. I get that all the time. So, and that's that's those memories. That's why I try to delete anything. I keep everything as much as possible. Um, but yeah, this is again, this is the highlight of some people's athletic career. So, you know, treat it right. Absolutely. And um, what are the plans for the future? Where do you see both of pictures? And how did you get the name both of pictures? I forgot to ask you that. Um, so both uh, is stands for breath of fresh air. That's what it stands for. Um, and that's just what it was. I just in the car with my mother, she lives in Arizona. She flew up and I was just trying to think of names for a company. And I, I liked breath, breath of fresh air, but I think like people trying to say that was like, <laughs> so I came up with it. And that's just, it just stuck. Um, so I have both for weddings, all LLCs, both for weddings, both for uh, pictures. And I have uh, both a media company. That that's amazing, and you say you also shoot weddings too. Oh yeah, that, that's my money maker. That's that's how I pay the bills. So yeah, that's more of my private stuff. Um, like again, I treat that the same way I treat these athletes. This is their moment. Um, hopefully they only do this once. But <laughs> care, uh, that process is possible. Um, be as locked in as possible with that. I've traveled to Florida, Miami, Colorado, Boston, just for weddings. So it, it really pays the bills. What's your favorite part about shooting weddings? Because I know that's a very different from shooting high school sports videos. I, I I don't enjoy it. I don't I don't like I don't have a because it's so high tense for me. Like I'm just like my anxiety is always up here just to make sure that I'm doing it right. So probably the best part of shooting weddings is the final editing process where I'm at home and I can just you know visualize what I want it to look like and you know I try to come up with two or three videos and let them choose from that but it's probably the editing process um I think that's my my favorite part of any type of filming is the post-production same here especially like with edits like with high school stuff with postseason is sometimes you'll make 10 11 12 13 minute videos but mm. you got cut that down to three minutes for the play <laughs> right right oh man I gotta pick some of the best plays like there might be a, a a player too that doesn't make I'm like, sorry, I gotta keep it within three minutes. Yeah, and that's that's real. And that's that's again, that's people don't understand that post production part. Like, because we us as the people that are filming, we think every shot is good. We think everything we capture is like that's money, that's money. And like you said, when you have to scale that back, you have to cut off that fat. And it's like, ooh, we like you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I mean First, at heights training, you no know, two a days. I might film for eight hours a day, and I got to come home and, like you say, cut that down to three minutes. You know what I'm saying? So it's, yeah. you know, that's that's my favorite part though. And I I try to do it at night where everything is still, and I could just focus. Yep. Sometimes my process will be like I'll come home from a game, I'll do the first half of the game, go to sleep, wake up, put the second half together. Cause I'm like one of those type of people who's like, I want to get this out like as soon as I can. Cause if I don't get it out, I'm going to forget. That's right. why I work like a horse to get the job done. Like if I'm at two, three games, you best believe all the, those games are going to be posted. Right. Like Keanu's right. YouTube page by Sunday, the latest, because people want to see their stuff instantly. That's like, right. You also got to do it right too. You got to, make sure that 
you're getting that one moment. You got to make sure, you know, you got to cut the fat. Like, you know, you can't have a 20, 30 some odd minute video that have like, some of the good, good folks. Unless, say, it's like a six or seven overtime game. And right. That's unavoidable like, still. And that's something that I struggled with when I started. If you go back to my first videos where I like, I was covering Rhodes and I covered CCC when Coach Duke was there. They had a really good team. Like most of my game recap videos were like 10, 15 minutes. And he, and you would see like read insights, how the viewers died off after a certain amount of time. And as hard as that, I'm like, okay, they're dying off at around five, four minutes. So I pretty much wasted six hours trying to get this last seven minutes onto this video. So that's how I had to, adjust to making those videos smaller because like you said you just you know you try to capture everything capture the moment but that's why i tend to go more towards documentary and storytelling because I, I can control that narrative a little more gotcha and uh i was one of those guys i would shoot with my phone because i started off as like a it's purely just a sports journalist just purely doing articles okay not really focused on the highlights until around 2020 2021 where I picked up a camcorder and I also picked up a legitimate one because the first two ones I had were some crummy knockoffs where you look back at it's like oh I can't right. use this right right it, it sucks because I took some really good if like if I had a the camcorder I have now back then I would have had great highlights but it's like I'm looking at it like I can't use this so I gotta right. use the stuff that I little like seven eight second clips from my phone then i got a camcorder now i'm able to do more with that you know so it's just evolving i feel like i've evolved as a content person myself oh, i definitely bro i actually was telling um coach carter about you maybe like two weeks ago and you had posted i think you were posting some votes baseball clips and I was like, I was just like, we were in the car together. I'm like, this dude, Tony everywhere, man. He is everywhere. She's like, who's Tony? So I, you know, we went through your page and I sent her some of your stuff. But I'm like, he is everywhere, like literally. So yeah, I, I, I watch, you know, I watch all of the content creators and see what they're doing. I try to be as supportive as possible. Um, you know, especially the ones that are really, you know, doing something for the sports scene. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's fun watching the people grow, watching looking at looking at all the different styles such as yourself and a lot of others just seeing hmm maybe i could be do something like that if not copy that put my own kind of twist right, right. It, you know what i mean um thank you for coming on the show by the way um where can people follow your work um sports page uh, it's bofa underscore sports media um, that's where you'll get any clips of and just any of my sports stuff that I film. I do highlights or whatever. Um, it's a link in that bio. It'll take you right to our uh, my YouTube page where you'll get the current episodes of the Blueprint that are aired, the current episodes of her season and some other stuff that I have going on. Um, but yeah, that's where you can follow me. I'm not too much of a social media imprint. I have a Twitter account as well. That's both of sports media, too. Awesome. Uh, thank you again for coming on the show. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and tap in with Tony's available on Spotify and wherever po wherever podcasts are streaming. All right. Thank you, Tony. I appreciate you. Keep up the good work, man. You too.